What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today we're going to continue with our AI enemy using behavior trees. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. But first, check out the link in the description to get our some Unreal Engine courses on WinFox. Alright, so as you may remember in the last episode, we made it so that the AI will go ahead and pick a random point in the scene and when it uh, detects us with a certain uh, vision and radius, it will go ahead and start chasing us. So now what we want to do is basically go ahead and make him attack us when he gets uh, into a certain distance from us. So for example, he gets very close to us, he will now uh, start attacking us with his animation and then send us damage. So let's go ahead and open its behavior tree. And what we want to do is basically go ahead and create a new task. Let's go uh, heavy up here <laughs> and then go ahead and select BBT task blueprint base. And I uh, want to go into tasks and then let's go ahead and leave this so btt task underscore well attack player let's go ahead and open this up so we're going to go ahead and go into functions and then in override we want to do a uh, receive execute ai as you may know from the last episode this is pretty much the begin play of a task and now we want to go ahead and find the finish finish if i spell it right finish execute and then for now we're going to go ahead and take it success all right, so this uh, the node that will de uh, determine uh, when the task will finish, so we can move, for example, from this one into the next one. You know how it works. All right, so what we want to do is basically detect and make sure um, that we are close uh, to the player. All right, so actually, we're going to do all that kind of uh, stuff inside of the blueprint. Why? Well, I, th I personally think that is a bit more optimum to do that. All right. Uh, I think that making the attack system and stuff is more a thing that the blueprint should do. All right, so what we can do is go ahead and get the control pawn and do a cast to our uh, BP underscore AI, which is basically our blueprint for AI. <laughs> and then we will go ahead and call a custom event over here, and then it will go ahead and finish the execute. This compound is safe. Of course, we haven't finished this, we have to call that attack event but let's go ahead and quit so let's go ahead and open the blueprint and then let's go ahead down over here so you may know the code from the last uh the last episode when it sends the player we'll go ahead and set the blackboard and variable to true so we'll start chasing the player so what we want to do is make a new custom event which is well attack player and now let's go ahead and compile and real quick go back into the task so now from the um, cast over here we can just call oh, uh, the uh, attack player event that we have just created so now we can go ahead and finish this like that all right so for now the uh, the task we can close it all right let's so go back into the blueprint so we want to basically detect if we have the player in front of us so to do this we're gonna go ahead and get the sphere trace for objects all right so this will basically create a simple sphere and we'll detect if there are any objects all right in our case we'll detect for our player so the start position will be well just in the center of our object so just getting the actor location and then the end point will be well the uh pretty much the um, the forward vector fit so we want to look and to find where this enemy is actually looking i want to get the forward vector so basically uh the angle as it is facing forward okay and then what we want to do is multiply this value and right click real quick over here convert to pin and to float and this is going to be the distance that we will be able to uh get our uh speed trace so in our case do for example 250 so this is pretty much the distance that the enemy will be able to attack and detect the player so now we want to go ahead and add both of this just hold control and then also go ahead and drag the bottom into the pin so i think it's a bit clearer on that and then we can uh, plug in the get actor location and then that will be our end point okay uh, you will see how it looks in a second okay now the radius is how because this is a three uh, three dimensional uh, sphere you know we need a radius so for now i'm gonna make it 120 this to you but we'll see how it looks in a second so you can get how you know how big you want and the values and stuff and then real quick in the get for our position we want to get the actor rotation uh there we go here it is all right so we can also put this over here it's a bit neater okay so now the object types well we're gonna go ahead and make a ray and this is just selecting 
uh, which type of full object we want to be able to detect. In our case, it's gonna be pawns because uh, normally characters in Unreal Engine are pawns, okay? And our third person character blueprint will be one. So then we want to go ahead and get the return value and print the brush. So it will only continue if it actually has detected an object. So let's go ahead and get our uh, out hit and then break it. So now we have all the different parameters from that object that we have um, basically detected. So we want to make sure that it is the player. So we're gonna get the hit actor and then cast to, sorry, I, I spelled it wrong. Cast to third person character and there we go. So if the cast succeeds, it will go through this first pin over here and it will be the player. But if the cast fails, it will go through the second pin and well, you know, it will not continue. So this is a great pace of doing this. Just detecting it, what we are, you know, detecting is actually the player. We can also do tags and stuff, but I think this is just the fastest way of doing so. All right, so now what we want to do is just for now, uh, we'll do all the things of uh, playing animation and stuff in a second. But right now, I'm just going to go ahead and print a message in the screen so we know we are attacking. All right, so attack. This is just for us to know that everything until now is working. Now, I'm going to go real quick over here. I'm going to go into draw the book type. I'm going to type for duration. So this is uh, just for us to see how this um, trace will look in the game. And we can see the radius and stuff and how it looks and if it's optimal for us. All right, so now we actually want to call the task that we created earlier. So we can call this event that we have just created from our behavior tree. So in our case, we want to do it when we're chasing the player. And we actually want to do it always that we're chasing the player. So there's a very handy uh, kind of sequence for it, which is a composite and it is a simple parallel. So this will pretty much do um, two tasks asynchronous. So we want to type the main one onto the left, which are, well, the chase player uh, task. And then we want to get our new one, which we have created, which is the attack player task. So now we can kind of center it up here and we'll do both at the same time. Of course, this will pretty much spam the attack um, button. Well, no, the, the, of course, the attack button because it's not a player interacting, but you know, the spam attack of the AI, you know what I mean. Anyway, so now just go ahead and double check the print over here in the left corner, which will be attacking, or you can even see the sphere trace appearing. So now you can see the sphere trace, so you can see, and now when it detects my player, when it gets into a certain position, you can see that now, well, it is going ahead and saying attacking. Of course, like I mentioned before, it is doing. I don't know, hundreds of sphere trays because of course we haven't prevented him of spamming. And now there are many ways of doing so, okay? So we have two ways. We can directly implement it in the event where we will basically make sure that um, the trays, once the event attack event is called, we don't do uh, the trays and the uh, cast to the character, etc. Uh, so often and with a frequency or like we're gonna do it inside the actual task. So we will basically only call the attack player um, event uh, when we actually want it. So let's go ahead and go here. And this will be as simple as going and dragging this and saying delay. <laughs> as simple as that, okay? So now we can just put a duration. Now, of course, let's go ahead and try this. This is how you want to do it, but I'm gonna put one over here. So if we press play, you will see that it will only do it each one second or so often. I'm going to actually decrease the time a bit. So it's a bit faster, like 0.7 maybe. This is just, you know, person preference. So this is just pretty much experimenting and see what you like. But now you can see that when he starts chasing, he will do uh, one and then another one and another one. And it's just a bit better as you can see, right? So now what we want to do is play the attack animation and, you know, send damage. So in my case, I have got my attack animation and here, as you can see. So this is from a pack that I always use in my combat tutorials. So I will be leaving it in the description. It is title with me. All right, so I'll be you know, linking in the description. So you want to put it as an UE4 mannequin because, well, for the skeleton of the UE4 because it actually was made for the UE4 skeleton. Uh, of course, guys, you can use whatever animation you want. I'm just using this one to showcase for the tutorial, yeah? So we want to go ahead and now retarget this animation to use the new UV5 scouting as you can see. So it is as simple as just right clicking, going to retard animation assets, 
duplicate and retard it. And then selecting the IK retarder, we say uh, UE4 to UE5. And then go ahead and uh, get the folder that we want. In our case, my one is over here, AI image. And then pressing retarget. And now you see that we have with the new uh, UE5 mannequin. So now we have the uh, attack animation playing. Just ignore the shotgun. It was from a nerd tutorial and stuff, okay? Anyway, so we can now also close make sure that you save everything ctrl shift s and then we can uh, close our uh, task and we want to go into the blueprint but first of all we want to make one more thing into our content browser and just create an animation montage so just go ahead and right click into the animation go to create and a montage and now we can go ahead and have this anime montage it will pretty much look uh, identical but the thing is that we can call it whenever we want from a blueprint so now we can go into the blueprint of the ai and we can delete the print string and now what we can do is instead of doing that, we can call this now, which play a name montage. All right. And now we can now select our, uh, what was push, I think. Yeah. Uh, per push attack one. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, it seems that I already imported it from another tutorial, but it's okay. You can use whatever you want. No notifications, please. There we go. All right. So uh, now it will go ahead and play the animation uh, when it gets into a certain point. But let's go quickly and make sure the into our animation blueprint that we go into the anim graph and we have the default slot. The default slot is the uh, it's basically where the animation montage will play by default. Of course, you can create new slots, but the animation montage will play in here. So if your animation blueprint doesn't have this slot, go ahead and add it right now. Default slot, but we did add it in the last tutorial, so we probably will have it. Okay. All right, so now if we press play, you can see that it will, when we get near to him, he will go ahead and find us. And now he's basically going ahead and attacking us, as you can see, each time he launches the thing. So we have a few things going over here. First of all, you can see that my camera clips through him when he attacks sometimes. We don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and go quickly into the uh, blueprint, select the mesh, go down into collision presets. And then in here, instead of character mesh gonna say custom and in camera we're gonna pass it into ignore i'm gonna do the same thing into the capsule component let's go over here into collision presets custom leave everything as it is except for camera we want it to be in ignore so now we'll basically just ignore the camera booms traits to detect objects and therefore it will not do that thing now we can also get rid of the the spirit traits we pretty much don't need it anymore but there's a few things that are happening right now. And it's pretty much that he says pretty much skiing. <laughs> you know what is happening? He's skiing. Now, I do have a really good tutorial on that. All right. And um, that I will be living in the description. You want more detail about it. Um, as you can see. But we're going to go ahead and do it um, real quick over here. So what we want to do is go and open up our animation blueprint. And we want to put this over here. And then after everything right before the output post, we want to go ahead and call this now, which is blend poses. What do you say, what do you say? Blend poses per bone. But sorry, blend layer uh, per bone. I was forgetting on the name. Okay, so um, basically this will allow us to split and blend uh, two different animations at once. All right. Like I said, I will not really explain it right now uh, because I have a tutorial on that. So I'll go ahead and leave it in the description so you can access it. All right, so the base post will be our main body, like in this case, the lower part. And then in the top one, it will be, well, when we play the animations. So let's go ahead and get the default slot and just put it in the blend post. And we want to get our blend space and just go ahead and create a new cache. It's like saving it in a pen drive. And want to name this uh, just locomotion. And then in here, we can put it a bit up, so it's a bit more organized. And then in the base post, we can go ahead and directly use the locomotion. But in the default slot, we want to use the locomotion and then add our default slot. So maybe this does, didn't make a lot of sense for you, okay? Don't worry, like I mentioned before, I have to turn on this. So if you want to check it out, go ahead. But basically, we're saving our whole animation of a whole body in a pen drive, okay? Using pen drive, it's not really a pen drive, of course, but you just to understand a bit better and then we are separating the uh, body in two parts we'll basically define which two parts in a second but the base pose and the base uh, band base uh, pose zero 
the base pose will be our lower part of the body, so in our case, we would just want directly to play these animations. But the upper part of the body, which is the uh, second input, we want to play our uh, lower part animations plus our attack animations. Alright, so now we want to go and select the layer band per bone, and in here layers it up, we want to add a new uh, member here, which will be our bone name. So we can go directly into the skeleton and we want to split it up into, let's say, spine 2. So let's go ahead and quickly copy the name, go back into the animation blueprint, select our name graph, con uh, no, sorry, control rig, no, this is the many. We want to go into the AI, all right, and then paste the name over here. All right, so now if we press play, you will see that now he'll be playing the attack animations but still be walking, which is just much clearer as you can see. Great, so let's quickly go ahead and implement the damage. So let's go into the blueprint, go ahead and say apply damage right after we go ahead and uh, you know do uh, our casting and play animation. Uh, the damage actor, will, of course, will be a player, which is our hit actor. And then the base damage will how much damage you want. In my case, let's make 10, for example. And right now, I'm not gonna make a whole health system because I already have, I already have, sorry, I don't know even how to speak. Uh, I turn on that. So again, I will be linking that in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and quickly just, you know, to get this working, I'm just gonna go into the third person get to blueprint and use uh, code this node. I know I have a lot of nodes over here. Don't worry about that. Uh, sorry, apply damage. No, uh, event any damage, all right? Uh, which I already have a thing over here. So let's go ahead and separate this. So this will basically be called when uh, we call this. So when an actor calls this into an, another actor, the other actor will detect by this. <laughs> I know that explanation made sense. But anyway, when we receive damage, it will call this, right? So in our case, let's go ahead and just say print string. And let's go ahead and say damaged. Something like that, okay? And then we can also... Uh, print the damage down uh, doesn't matter. Okay, we, uh, we can just press play and you can see that well, we we can we see the prints damage over here And it's basically one hit now This is a thing going on and it's that well He just stops when he gets very close to us and there are a few reasons to this Let's go quickly into the behavior tree. Let's go ahead and control shift save everything and let's close also everything except for the AI so you can see the chase player over here, which has an acceptance radius, as you can see. And the thing is that when he reaches that point, all right, he calls the finish execute um, node, which finishes this task. And the thing is that this task uh, plays asynchronous to this one. So if this one stops, this one will always, oh, sorry, also stop. So the thing that we want to do is go ahead and get just the acceptance rise to zero. And that should do the trick. So now if the player comes in, he will... Yeah, I, that didn't make the trick actually. Um, so we want to set that back to 100. All right, we want to go here and then... We want to also go ahead and call the attack player always after the um, the parallel so basically in conclusion he will be attacking and chasing us at the same time but just in case he finishes with this point if we are still in the chase player mode he will also continue to attack so if we now press play even though he gets to a point he will continue to attack as you can see so yeah that's pretty much what i did uh yeah i just pretty much you know make sure that uh, everything goes from left to right. So if this task finishes, it will continue this one, right? Anyway, I'll go ahead and leave this drone here. It was a bit longer of you know, what I would expect it, but it's okay because we have just reached 10k subscribers. So thank you all so, so much. I really appreciate all your support, guys. Uh, we'll continue making, of course, our own content. Go ahead and join the Discord that I have just opened. Link in the description. And now, yes, we all set. Like and subscribe. And see ya. Bye bye. Like and subscribe. And now I just blew all set. I know I have repeated this in all my videos, but bye bye.